Good day and welcome back. So today we're going to look at creating a server endpoint. So last video, section 10, we wrapped up um, creating client artifacts. So that was your, you know, we, we decided to use a module after going through and creating view, controller, and using those sub-generators to create individual ones. We use the module sub-generator to create a number of them. So, all right, so that was the client side. Well, this video is gonna be a little bit longer because we're gonna be looking at creating a endpoint on our server, which is our backend, right? And the endpoint, remember, is a URL or a set of URLs where we're gonna be able to connect from our front end. So we're gonna use the sub-generator for creating an endpoint on our server, and we have to modify a lot of files. Well, four or five files, but you'll see uh, it's still a bit of work. So first, for example, the documentation for ng full stack. And when you look at the sub generators available, you can see for the backend or the server, there's only one, which is this endpoint sub generator. And it's pretty, looks pretty much like all the other sub generator calls. You invoke the sub generator, you give it a name for what you want to create, and then you specify the feature directory. Okay, so let's jump in and get started. So for this video, what are we doing? What is our objective? Well, um, we already said it that we're going to be looking at creating an endpoint. And so we're going to, we kind of know what an endpoint is. And I sort of mentioned it already. So we kind of covered what is an endpoint already. And plus we have done that before a number of times. We're going to look at creating the endpoint and then we're going to try and do some testing with it. So minimum testing. So, okay, so we don't need this anymore. So that can go away. Now, in terms of code, I'm sitting here in the data, um, the chapter nine directory and I have my data directory. So I'm going to start up MongoDB and let that run. Um, da -da -da. Um, why did that fail? And then, 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 data not found, there data. Okay. I cleaned out my data directory earlier. Okay. So there we go. So, um, that's running and waiting. And so here we're going to be working in our application directory. And so of course I'm going to start up my code editor. Okay. So my code editor is up and where we left off the last time we we're looking at the client code. So we generated, um, this user, um, module with all these different files and so on, but we're not going to be working on the front end right now. We're going to be working at the back end, the server. So if you look here on the server, it's pretty much have a similar format to the front end, which is a client. So you'd see client dev and then inside of dev, you have the feature directory like to do or user, right? Backend is the same thing. Instead of client, you have server and instead of dev, you have API. And then inside of API, your feature directory is for example, to do, and it comes with a to do controller, a DAO and a model and a routes. Don't worry about it. Instead of covering it now, let's just go ahead, generate, see what we get, and then look at modifying that. So let's do it. Let's do yo ng full stack. Name of our sub generator is endpoint. The one we want to generate, if you remember, when we were doing our front end here, we added this um, comments set of file, you know, comment controller and blah, blah, blah. We kind of, um, you know, build that up a little bit. So why don't we do a comment endpoint and then the feature directory is going to be also to do. So we'll put it in the same thing. So if we look, five files are created. I don't want this last one, which is this test one. So I'm going to go delete that. Not that testing is not important. It's just right now. I don't want to focus on that. So um, I'm going to delete that for now. But you should definitely be writing tests and learn to do tests for your application. All right, so there are four files that were created that we're going to look at. First one is model, then DAO, then the controller, then we're going to look at the route. So let's go in. So let me close some of these files out just to give us make up here not so crowded and congested. So let's look at what we have. So like I said, we start with model. So here is our model and it says mongoose and we play with mongoose already in chapter eight where we talk about Talking, we look at playing with MongoDB and then using the Mongoose library to talk to MongoDB. So we're creating a schema and we did that too. We created a schema and then use our screen schema 
um, we created a model. We told Mongoose to create a model and of our schema. So let's compare that to what we do on the front end. On the front end, and let me expand this a bit. I'm gonna split my screen. And so let me uh, put the, okay, so that's our front end, that's the back end here, model. So notice the difference. Here we're using Mongoose, and this is how we define our schema, which is just an object. Remember this is ES6, so we have a constant, something that's gonna change. But you can imagine this is just var, um, you know, it's just a variable and it's a JavaScript object with some properties. And here's the properties and then the property name, define yet another object that describes this um, property. So on the front end, if you look for a comment, we have ID, username, admin. And so we should probably do the same thing for our corresponding model in the back end because when we populate this in the front end and send it to the back, it needs to be stored in MongoDB. So we can do ID, um, username. Oh, uh, this is the wrong model. I'm talking about a user model here. Uh, that's not the model I wanted. Um, I wanted the controller comment model. Oop, there we go. ID, subject, author, and task ID. And then they already give us a create at, which would be nice to have. So we should probably put this in our front end, create at, which is the date um, and time when our comment was created. And it seems like our comment is lacking. It has you know, an ID for the comment, the subject, or basic short description of our comment, who created the comment, and the comment is for which task. But we don't have a body for you to be able to put down put some more details about your comments. It seems like, yeah, we were missing that. So body is equals to null. And as we know from our front end, you take an object here, and use this ng extend to populate this. And this is a constructor function. Okay, so that's our front end. And so here's our back end. And so now we just ask ourselves, are these types okay? So ID, we should probably make like a number. Um, is it required? True, trim it. So I would, no need to trim. So we could take that as a number. We'll leave it, it wouldn't matter. Uh, subject is certainly a string. Require, order should be required. And tax, tax, task ID should be required. The body, we can make that optional. You don't have to have put a body. And create date, well, now it's going to have a default value. So that's going to be populated. So that seems fine and straightforward for a good start for our schema. All right, so the next thing we want to look at is, on our server side, uh, the DAO. Now, remember on the front end, when we had a DAO, what did we use? We used resource. We had an ng resource that described our endpoint because we were sending things to the back end. We didn't want to keep things stored on the front end. But here, we don't have to send to another server. We actually send into, well, we actually send into a server, sort of the database server, in this case, MongoDB. But we're using this library. So it's not a resource. It's not an ng resource library. Rather, it's the Mongoose library we're using to talk to MongoDB. So that's what we require. And this promise, Blueboard is just a promise library. Okay, remember we talked about promises, I think a lot in uh, several of previous videos. So we're gonna ask for, even though this file says model, we know that what's really in there is the schema. And so I don't like this name that it gave it here. So we're gonna say um, for the schema, da, 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 da. schema, we're gonna, I'm gonna call it, comment schema all right so we get our schema here which is what we described earlier with you know those restriction so we talk also about how to do a node module back in chapter 7 somewhere so please review the section on creating a node module so you can create a node module and so we require that and here's our schema which is basically um, whatever is returned here by mongoose where you pass it this object it, re it creates as a function call it creates something and return it so when we do a require on this file it basically executes that and that's stored here now we augment this schema that we get from mongoose when we do require by putting these get method the way you want to think of it is that instead of thinking of this as static think of it as prototype when you do a constructor function 
So we're augmenting the schema with these methods. We're going to look at the methods in a minute. Down at the bottom here, I want you to draw your attention to how this DAO uh, module is written. And what is it doing? It is taking whatever this value is that it gets from mongoose.model, which you give a name. I'm going to give the name comment. And mongoose uses your schema, creates something that is going to refer to as comment, which is what mongoose is actually going to create the database. So let's call it comments. Um, it, this is going to be a database name or your, doc, um, your database name in MongoDB, which is going to store documents, JSON document that matches the schema and fails to store them and so on if it doesn't match, right? And now Mongoose is going to create a, give you a reference to that here as comment. So I'm going to again use this to sort of rename that. And blah, blah, blah. I'm going to call it comment. So here we go. That's what's going to be returned here, this comment that we get from Mongoose. And we're going to use this Mongoose model, Mongoose model, to do our find and delete or our saving of a new um, comment or finding all comments. So now let's go through it. Like I said, we're going to augment the schema, which we're going to use to create a model. So the model is going to have all these methods. We're going to, oh, well, the model is going to have these, sort of have these methods. We'll see um, how that's going to play out. Um, but here's our, how we augment the schema. With this function called getAll, which doesn't take any parameter, and it's using, uh, what you're sending to it is the ES6 fat arrow function. Now remember, one way of doing a function is if you imagine that if I was doing a constructor function, I would say something like var foo is equals to function, and then I can do like this. That's empty function. Now I want to augment it with some method, right? Constructor function. So I can say foo that prototype that let's say get all is equals to function, and then I populate my function, define my function like that. That's one way. Another way is to say I want to use the fat arrow syntax, which simply does this. It takes out the key function keyword and puts a fat arrow between the argument list and the function implementation. So that is exactly what is happening here. And so this is equal to a function that takes an anonymous function that doesn't take any parameter. But when you call it, it immediately returns what? A new promise, right? It returns a new promise. And that promise takes a function parameter, and that function parameter is this. Promise object says, when I create, a, when I'm ready to return your promise, I want to be able to know how, what's the callback function when it's resolved, and what's the callback function when it's rejected, and that's what it uses. And so in this implementation here, it's let query, so you can think of let as being var, let this variable equals to some empty JavaScript object, and then we call on the model, which we created at the bottom here. We said model.find, which is provided by Mongoose library, using this query, but in this case, we don't do any filtering, which we covered, and then execute, and then there are two um, parameters that are gonna be get passed into this execute function. It's a callback again, fat callback, it says, when execute completes, after those find it executes, it's going to say, hey, I'll call you with an error object or a value and those to-dos. And so if there's an error, of course, we call our reject function with passing in the error. If there's, it wasn't, there's no error, then call the result function passing in the to-dos. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. Again, it's just callback, callback using promises. So calling our, if you call our DAO, it's going to have this method. Oh, do I know our DAO is going to have this method, this get all method? Because we are augmenting it on our schema and we're using our schema to create a model. And then that model is what we return. So once you require our DAO, you really get in this. This is being augmented by this, which has these methods. And if since we're at the bottom here, we can look at the remove by ID, which takes an ID, of course, returns a promise, the same exact thing, and it's checking to see is the thing that you pass in, you know, is it a string? And if not, it's going to do the reject. 
if nef is valid, it's a is not a string because it's supposed to be a number. Um, then what we want to do is find by ID and remove it. So we call that under comment model. And then, of course, we call it same execute. At the end of that, same thing. If there's an error, reject it. If it's no error, then, of course, this is deleted, but we don't pass that to our resolve function. We could have, but chances are if you delete something, it might just pass back the ID of the thing that's deleted, which you passed in, so it doesn't make sense to pass that back to resolve function. And here's creating new. To create a new object, you take a parameter, which is the JavaScript object called comment, and, of course, you create a new um, promise again and return it because these operations may take a while so the call of this doesn't have to worry again you make sure that our comment is an object and then if it is instead of let something I'm gonna rename this to underscore C and so underscore C is a variable equals to create a new comment model augmented with this object lowercase comment and then of course call save on that and of course pass in save is going to call back your callback function with an error or the object that it created. So we can imagine this saved object would have the mongodb underscore id field populated. Okay? And then of course they will reject and resolve. So I hopefully that is pretty straightforward. Um, this load dash is just a library that allows you to do some things like testing and so on. So you could see we actually call those um, like is object and is string on the low dash library, which is the same as your ng library here, which is, is defined, you know, and is string. So sort of the same thing. If we could use low dash in the front end, we could have used dash, uh, you can use low dash on the client side too. You could use that instead of, you know, ng. So hopefully that's straightforward. So I'm going to keep moving because this video is going to be, like I said, long otherwise. So let's go to the next thing. So now we understand our model. We use our model, which is just a schema definition, to create a DAO. Our DAO is really just a mongoose model, which has been augmented with these methods that we want. Let's look at our controller, comment controller on this API. Well, a comment controller, so I'm going to get rid of, let's see, I don't really need that right now. But our comment controller, um, oh, I think... Uh, I opened the wrong thing, but anyway, uh, there we go. All right, our comment controller looks like this. It just requires our DAO. But remember, our DAO is nothing more than a mongoose model that we augmented with the get all, create new, and so on, which uses um, mongoose to create a model to save stuff and so on to MongoDB. So, again, I'm going to sort of rename this. Now, please take note here, ng full stack generator is making a mistake. It ger generates incorrect code. See, this is required comment, but then here it call it comment DAO. This really should be comment DAO. Okay, that's what it really should be because that's what you require here. There's the DAO and then it reuses it here and there. But again, I'm going to rename this to uppercase comment so I'm going to say comment D A O. Okay. All right. So just take note of that. Even if you don't want to rename these other things, just take note of this one place where it makes a mistake and it just calls this whatever you specify. But then elsewhere in this code, it tacks on the D A O and your stuff would not work. All right. So I have a reference to the D A O, which is the Mongo, Mongoose model. So I have that. And then now I'm doing a class called Comment Controller. Again, remember, class is just a short run for creating a constructor function, All right? So, again, um, this is just going to assign the class that we create or the constructor function to models that it exports. So, that's what's being exported is this constructor function called, defined here with ES6 class keyword. Well, I'm going to call it uppercase because, because I like that. But we have a controller, and what we do is we define some methods. In our class so this is the same as if we had said you know constructor function that prototype that remove by ID so this is our controller now now since our controller have access to this DAO well the controller get all function takes the request itself from node and the response object 
and now we can call the DAO and say, hey, DAO that get all, that's, we look at this just now. This returns a promise. As soon as you call this, it returns a promise. So if you returns a promise, then what you can do to that promise is pass to it. This is what I want to happen if there's success, and this is what I want to happen if there's an error. We talked about this already using the catch. And so, of course, now that you pass those two to the promise, well, the promise knows how to take those two values, those callbacks, and use them here in this, you know, in the case of get all, which we're looking at, but it's going to be the same for all the others, okay? And so now, create new is the exact same thing. When we want to do a create new, we're going to say get from the request body the comment object, because the body should be all those properties that we want to do for create. And using the DAO, pause, pass that in. And of course, the same business with if I have a success, I'm going to be called with that new comment object that was saved in the database. And I'm going to return that as a JSON object using 201 success. Here, I'm going to use 200. But remember, anything in the 200s is, is okay. Um, then, <clears throat> excuse me, if you delete, same thing, request by ID, I'm going to get the ID from params. Notice I'm not getting a request from the body because when we usually do a request to delete something, we pass in that ID as part of a dynamic um, RESTful URL, right? If you remember, we'll take a look in a minute and you'll see I'll jog your memory. But we're getting that ID from the parameter of the request instead of from the body of the request. We're getting it from the parameter of the request. We save it here and then we make that call and the same thing happens. If we're successful, remember our callback or resolve callback for delete case does not expect an input so there's nothing here to pass in and all we do is we end that request which is something we played with when we talk about node, okay? And so now uh, if it fails, we reject and we send back the error because now we get, an, we get the error. All right, so that looks good and this is our controller. Let's go take a look at our route. Our route requests only our controller, which means it only reads in that. And so, again, I'm going to change this because I don't like the name that they gave it. I locate some kind of comment controller. And so for a comment controller, what it's saying, it says, again, I'm creating a constructor function using the class or a class. And I'm gonna call it comment routes. I'm gonna pass it back as my module implementation. And then I'm gonna create one function. This is this init function, which goes from here. And this function takes a router parameter. On that router parameter, when I'm called, I'm gonna do router.route. And this is, I'm telling the router, I want you to configure a route to slash API comment. Well, let's call it comments, slash API comments. And if it's a get to this route, then I want you to send that to the controller that get all. Remember, we could do an anonymous function here too, but the reference here to this function get all, if you remember in our controller, is a request and a response. And we, if we remember from when we were playing with Node and you have an application you want to create a route, you'd actually give the path and then you specify a callback function that gets past the request and the response. And of course, this is just post to make it easier, easy to come to define the methods for this particular route, right? Then here we have another route. Again, we call this another router, and here's our dynamic URL, which is where the ID will be passed. Hence, why here for create we use the we read the properties from the body when it's a post, and then here when we're doing a delete we read the ID from the params because that's going to be part, passed as part of the URL. And again, we says, you know, if it's a delete method, then call this delete function, which delete by ID, we see here that says get from the parameters, the ID, and then pass it and so on. Okay, again, shouldn't be nothing crazy. But now the question is, how do we, so now we've looked at the four functions that were created for our endpoint. But how does that tie into the rest of our backend application? How does our backend know to actually use this controller now? Well, um, that's where roads that index.js come in. 
And here we can see that our to-do routes was tied in for to-do routes, which is this guy. So looks like if we want ours to be known and used, we should do the same thing. So we could create a comments route and we should require it from comments. Well, comment route. Well, here is our comment. Oh, they didn't call it routes, they call it route. So I'm going to rename it just to be consistent with the to-do. So to-do routes, comment routes. So I name them the same way and the file name matches up. So now we can require that route that we just look examine, the route file for comment, and we have it here. Now here is they require some static thing. We don't care about that, but let's look here. The implementation of this module is a class called routes. And what is it init method do? It init method accepts the application and a router. And for to do routes that init, it passes that router. And we also have a comments. Our comments route also has an init method with a router. If you remember, let's take a look. Here's our comment routes, and it has an init method that takes a router that configures our routes. So when we call this method, when this method is called with app and router, these two are going to be called to augment the router with their appropriate paths. And after that's finished, the router will then be um, given a route of star, which is everything else that doesn't match these two or anything that comes before this. And it should the get on that any one of anything else should be provided by here. And we do not care about that. So. We are not going to worry about what the implementation of this actual send index function look like, but we can imagine it's a function that has, you know, request and response, and then based on whatever is being requested, it's going to know how to respond. So we don't care. And then finally, the application object is being used to say, hey, application, I want you to use for the slash route, this router. So every time the application see any request on slash, it's going to send to this router, and then this router is going to take over and can start you know, navigating appropriately those requests based on the additional things that were configured on it. Again, shouldn't be too complex because we sort of covered this as just a bit cleaner than how we did it. We sort of put everything in one file. It wasn't quite as broken out and so on. All right, so that's it. Now we can compile our backend and run it. So if you remember to run our code, we say npm run dev, and then you do that. And so we have an, an error here. So our front end came up, but it looked like our back end might have a problem. And so let's go back and see what that's about. So it says comment routes is not defined. C O M M E N T R U T E S. Let me see if I did that comment correctly. Oh, and of course I made a mistake here by putting an S there. So it's comment routes. And that comments routes. Okay, so let me kill this and start over. And we watch and it's running and it came up now and my backend didn't have any error. And so here is our front end and I can add a task or to do and huh, it didn't save it. <clears throat> so post and it did not save it. I saw, you know, post to this didn't work and let's see why not. So there's one connection to my database. So why didn't it not save it? Um, huh, I don't actually have an idea why. So let's see, let's view developers, developers console and fail to load the server response with the status of that that. So here's the object and let me scroll up a little bit. Uh, you really don't need this error right now because um, it's not like we don't have anything to sting. To do validation fail, validation error. Ooh, uh, why did the validation error fail? Uh, blah, 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 blah. To do validation error. Did I change anything in my to do back end? So we're talking about. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about the to do model. And here. Okay, so the server, we have ID, order, author. <coughs> oh, uh, did I put a body? Hmm. Um, 
Author, so task ID. Yes, it looked like I changed my to do instead of changing. Uh, that's the problem. I changed my to do instead of changing the comment model that I added. So I really wanted this stuff to be on the comment model. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna control. Uh, all right, so that doesn't wanna go back. So that's fine. I have a way to fix that. So that's the thing I need to change, which is my comment model schema on the back end. To fix this, what I'll do is I'll cheat a little bit. I'll say git ht and I'll do git checkout. So just in case you can see, I'll say git git checkout and I'll check out my server API model to do, which is this guy. So by checking it out, I'm gonna reread it from git and it should restore it to what it used to be. And so there it is. To do message, create that. Okay, so now I simply need to stop my servers again and rerun them. And there we go, bam, and I'm gonna try this again. Save in at to do, and do add, and it saved it to the back end. I have no issues with that, it was successful. Thing that we wanna do though, is we wanna go play with our comment part of the application. If you remember in our front end, we sort of just have our controller giving us these objects. Like we could sort of, we, we fake from our, let's just close this user one. We're not using that right now. Comment controller, we have these fake object here. So we do new comment on our model, had these new objects. And then we had this remove function, um, that we'll call our DAO, and remember our DAO is tied up to go to the back end and fetch, and our fetch function here is gonna try and get something from the back end, and of course, the create here that's gonna post something to our back end. So we have stuff already wired up for our back end, except we don't actually fetch these objects from our back end. So ideally, when you're ready to fetch these from the back end, we don't need this. Um, what we need is just a way to fetch it after we come through and run through our function here, which does this, this, um, and it creates all these functions that our front end use. Just before it return, what we wanna do is say, what if we had a function called refresh? Refresh doesn't take any parameter. What refresh does is it simply um, call comment that DAO that get all, all right, and then that then function on it. So we can do that then function and we can see a function. Um, so our, to, our comments, right? And when we get back our comments, then we wanna do self that comments is equals to comments, right? That makes sense? And of course, we can always change this into a fat, um, thing by doing that, all right? All right, so that seems pretty straightforward. And um, if we don't need that, I think we can actually do without this guy. So we can actually do like that. Okay, so that makes it a little bit shorter. And then uh, if it fails, if we fail to, to get anything, we can do catch and we can do error and then we can do console that log you know whatever the error is okay so that would be how refresh would work if you call refresh and so since we have a refresh function we can just call it we can say refresh um, basically when this controller is the page is used as this common page is loaded or this route is navigated to we want to just go through and of course make all these available for our front end. And then we want to do is refresh, which is fetch anything from the back end and then populate it with our, to, our, to our front end, which is self that comment. How do I know that our comment DAO has a get all? Well, here's our comment DAO, where is it? Comment resource, but then we're supposed to have a comment DAO. There it is. Our comment DAO is a get all function and it uses our resource, remember it's return comment resource, that's because like the back end, how we would say return new promise, or comment re or resource, comment resource is a promise. Um, so 
and notice how we return that and then create a promise after we do a get blah 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 to the back end. Okie dokie. All right, so but we want to kind of test it before we get in. So there's something called Postman, and basically the way you can um, use Postman is let me go here and bring my um, browser up to the top and if I open a tab and I go application I'm using Chrome and I say Postman it gives me this plugin that I can use for testing now it also tells me how it's going to go away pretty soon and I could download the standalone application which would be this guy so if that is the case you can either use it notice they both look very much the same so they look very much the same so I could use either one all right but for now I'm gonna use they're both the same so instead of having another application running I'm gonna just use the plugin but if you don't have the plugin and you download the application same thing so here is my API to my comments remember we, we said our API is gonna be reachable um, when we did comment routes we said it's gonna be slash API comments so there's it's running and I could send this get request to that and it's empty and it should be empty so if I send a get request it navigates the controller like get all and our controller get all is going to use our DAO to try and get some comments to fetch something from the database MongoDB and return it now how do I know it's working well let's replace this comment here with um, actual array of values of objects so I'm gonna say ID 5 test whatever name it doesn't really matter testing or something and I could return more than one of them could return another one ID 10 subject foo All right and if I save this control stop this run it again and of course it's gonna run my thing again but it doesn't matter and I go back and I send this request you can see it returns those values so that tells me that it returns whatever value was here that's put here and in our case the value that's put here is comment which is injected here as a parameter remember this is a fat function okay and so that is going to return so all we have to do is hope that our DAO can actually go retrieve stuff from the database and right now we don't have any comment so when we try creating a comment and see how that works so let's go to postman are we going to say we want to do a post because post is how you do a create right your controller when you do on your route you do a post to this URL it calls your controller create method and your controller create method here reads from the body this object and pass it in so let's do that so um, we're gonna go do a post then we're gonna say raw and JSON and let's create a JSON object and send it so a JSON object looks something like that and we know that ID colon is required and it's an int we know that subject is required and that is this is my awesome comment and then we know that tax task ID is also required and so this is going to be the task ID for some task that's look really funky right and it doesn't have any capital F but whatever um, maybe it does and then what's the other thing author who is writing this comment and let's just put Sam troublesome Sam and what else is required nothing else is actually required I think well let's send it and see so we do send and so we get back an error that says task ID is required well we have task ID author is required we have author subject is required we have subject and id is required we have that so what is the validation error then why is this failing well it's failing because we're doing a post we send in json but our headers are actually we don't send any headers telling the back end what kind of um, data we're sending so we need to put the content type so this and we need to say application slash json and then now we can send again and notice when we send it goes hmm there's an error here well uh, where is this error coming from now so if we look through our code we can see that um, we're still having an error somewhere 
So Jason is trying to read blah 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 and blah body index. Okay. So what is going on? Um mm -hmm -hmm. unexpected string. So where's the unexpected string? Oh you know what? This is not valid JSON object. We need comments at the end of these guys. So this is not valid JSON object. So we send again. And there we go. Now we're successful. Notice our API post to comment returns a 200. And this is the result that was returned. And if you remember from when you save something in MongoDB, you get that funky ID, which would be something like this for a task if we had a task. Right? And then look at that create add value. So now this is it's stored in MongoDB. How do we know? We can go back and do our use get API to fetch this back. Oh, well, we have to stop our backend and rerun it because um, we make those changes, but we never stop it and rerun it. So now that this is running again, now we can go back here and rerun this, and we get that um, from the database which is stored. And we can go back and post another one. And we can say ID nine and second comment and for the same task maybe and this one is posted by Peter and he's all good about how we write his name and we're gonna send that and there we go and now let's go back and get our comments and we have our two comments all right and notice the time and date and everything so now we know our API is kind of working well do we really know that it seems like there's one other thing we need to do to, to test our API. We can post, we can get, but we need delete. So let's try delete. Let's post another one and we can call this one. We'll put 10 and we'll put third comment, um, da, da 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 da, whatever. And this one is by same. And so we're going to send it. And of course, we're going to go get to make sure we got all three. And there they are. But let's delete this one. So we're going to take the ID. And try and delete it so we copy the id and now we're going to do a delete so we have comments api forward slash paste that id can remember that is the route we're using for delete it's post to comments ah i didn't change this one but for now i'm going to run the code since i already have the code running i'm gonna post to, well, let me just do the right thing let me control c stop it and restart it so notice you want to make sure that all your endpoints are correct huh all right, so I'm gonna paste the comments, this ID, and then what I wanna do, the method I wanna do is a delete, right? I don't care about headers right now, I'm just doing a delete to that URL. And I'm gonna do a send, this doesn't matter, right? Because these things are not gonna be sent. And then I do a send, and I don't get anything back, which is what we expect, we won't get anything back. But look at this, delete forward slash API comments, this whole thing and we got a 200 back okay which tells us our stuff should be deleted how do we know let's go to a get and we get those we're supposed to see 9 and 10 because we deleted the one with the id5 so our api is working for the three um, methods that we've implemented all right so how about if we tie in so we did a simple test of it so how about tying that in to the rest of our front-end application well Let's ignore our backend for now because that seems to be working. Let's go to our front end and go to the controller. We set it out here. We have this array and we put this refresh function that once you load the comment up, it would fetch it from the backend. But let's see if that's the case. Let's go back to our application and just run refresh. And it looked like we have enough problems here. Well, let's just see what the problem is. It seems like we have an error on our front end code. And when we look, we can see it. Uh, oh, C is not defined. Where is that? It's in common DO that get all, and it's in line 12 and column 18. So let's see where that is. Um, so common controller uh, 18. Oh, so now we need the common controller from our, which, which common controller is this one? This is our, yep, this is our angular one. So that's the one that says comment controller. When we do fetch, um, uh, C is not defined. Where is that? Let's go back. Comment, not controller, DAO. It says comment DAO, and I'm still looking at controller. So comment DAO, um, 
and it says when you do get function C is not defined so here we're calling return this calling get with a prompt to C there's no prompt to C when you do a get we're not passing in anything how do I know that because our resource here for get does not accept anything get here doesn't take any parameter we don't expect a parameter so that was the problem so that should have saved and updated our DAO because um, not DAO where was that our yeah our DAO I was looking at the resource again so that should have been saved and our front end should have been refreshed and notice or once it was refreshed I take out the error what happened no I have my two comments that I created for Peter and Sam and these are being fetched from the back end and if I want I can put like delete next to each one of these by simply going here going to my template for comment and instead of and so in this loop here I can see what I want to do is put um, a delete and I can do that with a a tag and I'm gonna do ng click if you click on this a tag what I want to do is for you to call this delete button this delete method that we expose to our front end from our controller and what am I passing in as the ID well I'm actually passing in for each C there's the underscore ID that we get from MongoDB that's what I want to use to do the delete right and then I'll put the X to represent delete here and then I'll close that off okay and I don't like how it's highlighting it, but oh, that's because oh, yeah, I'm not sure. A and G click, ah, not class, click and G click. And so um, now I want to um, refresh, and hopefully that should be fine. So I'm gonna take this out because I don't really want this, and mm, whatever. Um, I don't really need that either. Okay. All right. No, maybe. I do. Okay. I'm not permitted to change too much stuff now. And so, okay, let that save and refresh our front end. And so, again, it refresh. Now, expected end of expression ng click. Why does that ex unexpected end of expression? Oh, there's an extra quote. So, ng click. Uh, I have two ng click. Okay, ng click is equals to um, controller that remove, call my remove function and pass um, the C that ID for each thing. All right, because I'm looping over in my comments, I loop over each one. So now this should be fine. Oh, and I do not have any error. And I have this. Now, if I click this, now when I click this, it, I don't know if it actually did anything. Because I didn't say that oh, after you delete, you know, I didn't say in my controller that after I call this remove function here, where is it? Uh, remove function that it should do anything other than remove if there's no error, blah blah blah. I didn't even say, uh, if there's an error, I set it to message, but I didn't say that if it's successful, if you successfully remove something, um, actually there's nothing that's going to be passed, so I call remove. I should have a then and it's successful and when then is called I know nothing is going to be passed back here what I should do I should call my refresh function that's what I should do when I successfully remove something is refresh my front end and so notice that was gone but it didn't refresh and then now when I click this now it refreshes all right so I can go back here in postman and post something and create it send it and I can go here, refresh my screen, it would show it, and then I can delete it, and it's gone, right? Because you could see when I delete, after I delete, I go get all the comments, and it's gone. So our front end is now completely tied up to our back end. We don't have the prop, all of the input fields to be able to do a proper create. If I actually try to put something here and here and try to do a create, it would fail because um, I don't have enough all the fields I don't there are fields that are missing right um, so that wouldn't work that's why you see you create fail here so we need more input fields but hopefully this shows you that ng full stack at least give you a lot <coughs> excuse me towards creating that 
restful endpoint, we have to modify a few things. It was very little though that we have, we have to really change. What did we change? We augmented our model, bam. We went to the DAO and we um, didn't have to do a whole lot either. I mean, I renamed some things like capital comment or whatever, but for the most part, they give you three of them, post, create, and delete. If you want, you can add more. And in our example, we're gonna add more. We're gonna do like a get, for example, get by ID. Because right now our get just finds and return all of the comments. But maybe what we really need to do is when we ask for comments, we want to get all that belongs to a particular task and not just all the comments because that wouldn't make really sense. So we might still need to pass in a parameter for get all. And then we add our controller. Again, not much work to do there in the controller. You can easily just copy and modify very easily. With these three examples, you should be able to do any other additional methods. And then for a route, same thing. You want to add additional routes, you know, whether it's on this resource and or this URL or on this URL. Okay. All right. So this one would make sense. For example, when we try to get a particular comment, for example, or we try to get all comments for a particular task ID, all that is possible. It depends on how we pass it in. All in all, this video is very long. So let me just end this here and say again, practice, test, play with it, comment, give feedback positive, negative, feedback is feedback. Uh, thanks for your time if you're, um, for spending your time with me, giving me your time. Thanks for subscribe if you're already subscribed. Um, thanks for spreading the word if you're doing that for me. And if you haven't subscribed and you're not spreading the word, please do both. Thank you very much. Take care. See you in the next video. In the next video, since we cover everything, but well, pretty much everything I think we need to cover on NG Full Stack, the next thing is going to be creating back our to-do application using NG full stack instead of just this demo app and then wrap up. Um, the thing we're going to do there that's going to be slightly different than what we have done here is we're going to try and have a nice looking application using NG material, but or bootstrap, we can use either one. So again, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.